So depending on where you're at, um, you're gonna use a different MLS. So a lot of people use CR MLS, the California Regional MLS. We have about, I wanna say 220,000 realtors, members of it. Now, if you're in Beverly Hills or LA area, you might be with CLAW, but I think that they're starting to make sure that almost everybody in California is on CR MLS. Anyway, the reason I told you that is what happens, this is what happens. This is how you guys become real estate agents. You get a broker and the broker is a member of a particular board. Once you get that broker and you sign up with the broker, you have to join the board that he belongs, he or she belongs to. So you're gonna join the board that your office belongs to. Now, some offices will belong to more than one board, but once you join the board, you're gonna to have to have orientation. And what they're gonna do is make you learn the um, California or the real estate agent code of ethics. You're gonna learn the code of ethics and then you're gonna take classes from your board, okay? The classes from your board will teach you how to use the MLS. Um, what I do with my new agents is after they take their ethics class and they take how to use the MLS, they have to sit down with me for about four hours and learn how to really use the MLS because how I use it is totally different than how other people use it because I used to flip houses so I can find a house in, I, like a needle in a haystack. I mean, yesterday we were looking, it was so funny because when we found this property, it was only $97,000. I'm like, let's see how much it was before he upped the price. He originally listed it at 68,000. I'm like, okay, we'll go in at 70,000. The reason it's so cheap, it's in Desert Hot Springs, okay? Yeah, but it rents out for $1,300 a month. Hello? Anyway, so um, I, I search differently. I set up my search engine differently. So you guys have to learn how to play with it better. But um, so anyway, the thing I was gonna tell you about is when you pull up a property, this is pretty cool. If you press on the APN number, remember that, press on the APN number where it says the APN number, it will give you the chain of title. It will tell you who owns the house now and it'll show you this is who owns the house now, this is who they bought it from. This is who those people bought it from. This is who, So it shows you the chain of title. It has to be a continuous chain of title. If it has a skip in it, that means there's a break in the chain and if there's a break in the chain, the title company may not insure the sale. How about that? You learning something tonight? All right, so in the chain of title, it has highlight that whole darn gray box. How we did it is we just circled the gray box with the highlighter. So building the chain of title, the, recorder, the recorder's office files the instrument under the party's name. So the full name of both the grantor and the grantee must be given. If the grantor's name is not given exactly as it appears in the conveyance of the grantor, it may not be possible to complete the link in the chain of title. Most title searches are conducted by tracking the grantor's interest backward in time when tracking the first recorded grantee interest forward. So you guys can read about that. Nothing is on the state exam, but that's telling you about how the grantee works. Go to top of page 89 where it says tops of types, tops, types of deeds. The first one is the most important one, which is the grant deed. The grant deed is a deed that you're gonna be using all the time. Every time you sell a house, escrow's gonna send the grant deed to the sellers, like I said earlier. The typical form of a grant deed appears in figure 4.4, so that's gonna be the next thing that we see. Highlight the words types of deed and highlight grant deed. Drop down to the first sentence in the next paragraph and highlight the grantor makes or implies warranties in executing the grant deed. So the grantor is saying, I own this property, it's mine, there's no liens against it, it's, it's a marketable title, okay? So when I sell it to you, you'll be able to market it to the next person. So the, that's, that's why it's so important that you get a grant deed. Because a quick claim deed is different. A quick claim deed is saying, I, I don't have any rights to this, I'm giving you the property, I don't care about it anymore, I'm not guaranteeing anything, okay? That's, that's the uh, quick claim deed. The grant deed is saying, hey, this property is marketable. So the last sentence in that paragraph highlight the grantor warrants that and highlight the grantor's interest in the property has not already been conveyed and highlight there's no undisclosed encumbrances on the property. Next page is going to show you the grant deed. There it is. Isn't it pretty? So there's your grant deed. Gift deeds, that sounds like fun, huh? A gift deed is when somebody gives you the property. Cause see what you're gonna see is you're gonna see the consideration, how much money is being paid. So if you look at the grant deed, it says the undersigned grantor declares and it has the document transfer and it has how much. So this is how 
the tax assessors figure out how much they're going to assess the new buyers for, for their property taxes. Because it says on there, right there, how much they paid for it. If it's a gift deed, let's say your parents have a home and they're gifting it to you, then it will say on there, no consideration. And it can say that. Here we go with the gift deed at the top of page 91. Highlight gift deed, drop down one line and highlight. It may use, be used to convey property as a gift by supplying the words, are you ready for this one? Love and affection as consideration received. Now I just talked about quick claim deed a couple times. Highlight the words quick claim deed. So the quick claim deed conveys any interest the grantor may have in the property at the time the deed is executed. Highlight, no implied warranties, circle that, no implied warranties are made by a quick claim deed. That's the difference between a quick claim deed and a grant deed. And there's no express or implies warranties that the grantor owns any interest in the property anyway. They may not even own it. They're just saying, I don't want any part of it, okay? Drop down, somebody sounds like they got burned. Um, next one down, the quick claim deed does ensure that whatever interest the grantor may have in the property is conveyed to the grantee. Highlight the quick claim deed is commonly used way of clearing a cloud on the title. So we already talked about that. Remember the married woman, the single woman got married? That was her mistake, not mine. <laughs> Sorry, just kidding, that was bad. Um, warranty deed. We don't have on the test and we don't have it on the final. Trust deed, this is a good one. So I'm going to explain the trust deed and how it works because we have trustees in California. I think if most homeowners read their actual deed, they'd probably run so far they wouldn't know what to do. Because it literally says in your deed of trust that if you don't maintain your property, they can actually foreclose on you. If you don't do what it says, they can foreclose on you. So here goes. Trust deed. Highlight, the trust deed is also called the deed of trust. We're going to see it in 8.3. It's used when property serves as a security of a debt. That's what you're highlighting. The debt typically is a loan used to purchase the property. So it's your mortgage, but it's not called a mortgage in California. It's a trust deed. When the purchaser of property borrows money to finance the property, highlight the borrower, who's the new owner, is the highlight trust or the grantor of the trustee. Highlight the trustee is the party who holds your title. I'm going to explain it in English in a minute after we're done highlighting. Until the debt is paid. Highlight the beneficiary is the party whose behalf of the title is held. Is the lender. Highlight the lender. So how I remember these things, I teach you guys how to remember stuff super easy. So you have three people involved in the trustee. You have the trustor, the O-R means it's the owner, so that's easy. You have the beneficiary, right? The beneficiary is the bank because it starts with a B. Got it? Beneficiary bank, lender. And then you have the trustee in the middle. The trustee could be a title company or an attorney. There's one big trustee down in San Diego because he does a lot of this stuff. So um, the trustee is the one who um, helps the beneficiary if something goes wrong. They have two jobs. There are two jobs. First job is this. If you're not making your mortgage payment and the beneficiary says, hey, Mr. Trustee, my trustor is not making their payment, we're gonna go ahead and foreclose. So once the beneficiary tells the trustee that they're gonna foreclose, the trustee is the one who sends out all the notices to the homeowner that says notice of default, um, better known as an NOD, get it? Notice of default. Um, and they'll send out the notice of default. From the time of the notice of default, you have about three months before you get a notice of sale. And when you get the notice of sale, you have about 17 days. So it's approximately four months, okay? So the trustee's, the trustee's job is to do the foreclosure process. On the other hand, they do have a good job. Their other job is when you pay off the beneficiary, when the trustor, the owner of the house, pays off the beneficiary, the trustee's the one who sends within 21 days, 21 calendar days, and that's on the state exam, 21 calendar days, I believe it's 21 calendar days, they have to send a reconveyance deed and take the lien off the house. You paid them off, we're taking the lien off. Does that make sense? So that's the trustee and the trustor and the beneficiary. Next page. Hey, look it, we're almost done. Reconveyance deed, I just told you what that was. That's when the trustee sends it back to you after you paid off your mortgage. The sheriff's deed, none of this stuff, nothing else in this chapter is highlighted. 
The sheriff's deed is when um, some the sheriff's is um, doing a writ of execution and they do a sale of the property in front of the, in, wherever they list the sale of the property and you get a sheriff's deed. You don't get a trust deed or a grant deed or a quit claim deed. You get a sheriff's deed. If you buy a house at a tax sale, you get a tax deed. How about that? Um, somebody's asking me to look at a question. I'm an agent. I read the one. I read the one about the agent in Colorado. She said it was fun. Okay, so does the grant deed convey to the trust deed after the, after the bank holds it for the loan? Okay, so the grant, no, what they do is they send a reconveyance deed when they pay off the loan. Convert, yeah, no. So, no, it doesn't, it just, it's paid off. So once it's paid off, so they're asking if the, if the grantee, I mean, if the trust, I think they're asking this, if the trustee, does a grant deed or deeds the property over to the homeowner. They, they use the reconveyance deed to get it to the back to the homeowner. I hope I answered your question. Wait, are they asking me another one? Yes. No, does the, there's an arrow in the way, grant convert. No, it doesn't convert. It, no, it doesn't do it that way. You're making it harder than it is. And if you're an overthinker, you're gonna have some problems. You guys, don't be overthinkers. Overthinkers do not pass the state exam the first time. They pass it about the third or the fifth time, okay? Now what? What's the difference? Fernando, there's no, the difference is a grant deed is, it's granting. They're granting the property when they're doing a purchase versus a reconveyance deed is when you paid off your mortgage and they're reconveying it back to the homeowner. Reconveyance means it's going back to the person who bought it. You could read it in more depth if you want to be more detailed, but that's about all you need to know. You're not going to do it that way. Do we have another question? No, okay, we're good. All right. So transfer of deed. Um, I think this went away. God, my eyes twitching. I think the transfer on death deed just went away in January because my attorney wanted me to do that instead of my um, living trust because my living trust is so crazy because I'm a real estate investor and as all real estate agents, you should own real estate, right? That's your next, that's your next task, you guys. Before you quit your job that you've been on for at least two years and go become a real estate agent, buy something. I don't care if it's a studio condo. Own something and go through the process. Because I know I, if I was a buyer and I was buying a piece of property, I'd be asking my realtor, well, how many properties do you have? Or, you know, when did you buy your property? Because why would I take advice from somebody who's never gone through it? That makes no sense to me at all. Okay. That's like you guys going to a Tesla dealer and seeing him drive off in his Corvette or something. Ferrari. I don't know. Anyway. So the deed on death thing, I think this went away this year. So transfer on death deed. Um, you could have done that. I don't, I have to ask my attorney cause he wanted me to do this with my son because I have multiple properties and I'm like, God, this living trust is killing me. But anyway, um, a transfer on death deed would be, let's say that I say to my son, um, I'm going to give you, a, I'm going to give you a deed to the property and it's a deed on death. So when I die, it automatically goes to you. Okay. I don't have to have a living trust. I don't have to have, um, anything else, but however, I think like it says, it says, let's see what it says. A new form. It says it's a new form. It's supposed to go away now. A new form of non probate. There it says non probate transfer of real property was created. There it was created in 2015. So this was to avoid probate through the statute um, will be in effect until January. Yeah, it says January 1st, 2021. Yeah, they took it out. I missed it. Well, you have a couple days, I think. I don't know. Anyway, so that's the end of that chapter. We're going on. So you guys have um, to go on your, make sure you go into your computer and you do your chapter quizzes, okay? You guys all with me? This thing is really annoying because when you come on here and do it, then it doesn't get to where I want to be. Okay. I'm going to be, should I be more